Welcome to the Spot Actor Podcast. I'm Dr. Trevor Cates. 2020 is a new year, a new decade, and great opportunities to get your health back on track. And that's so much of what I'm doing with the Spot Actor Podcast right now to help you get back on track with your health and set your goals for 2020, for the new year, the new decade. And who better to talk about fitness than Kathy Smith? She is a New York Times bestselling author and has been called a fitness titan for good reason, of course, with her iconic library of exercise workouts. She has inspired millions of women to move their bodies. Kathy has stood at the forefront of fitness and wellness industries for for more than 30 years with their highly acclaimed podcast, The Art of Living, and an all-in-one workout app, Kathy remains at the cutting edge of a business she helped pioneer. She's created a collection of top-selling books, videos, lifestyle products, and fitness equipment, and a spot in the Video Hall of Fame with the mission of inspiring the best of all people. Kathy's Ageless program is an ongoing series devoted to inspiring her audience to live life to its fullest with her motivational message, strong women stay young. Kathy is a mother of two daughters and currently lives in Park City, Utah, where I live. And she can she could be found hiking or skiing on the mountains with me or without me sometimes. So I love having Kathy Smith back on the podcast. On today's podcast, we talk about how to set achievable wellness goals for 2020. And Kathy shares facial exercises, because you have muscle, muscles in your face too, tips for dropping that excess belly fat, and the best times for workouts, including how to fit them in with ease. And she gives specific tips on how to do these exercises. Plus, she shares Tried and Trust's exercise tips and a new trend that's getting people big results while lifting less weight. So you'll have to watch the podcast to find out what that is. All of this is to help you look and feel your best in 2020. So please enjoy this interview. Kathy, it's so great to have you back on the Spot Doctor podcast. <laughs> What's so funny seeing you here? I feel like I should be on the mountain skiing with you. <laughs> in Park City. We should be doing this together in person. <laughs> All right. So I know we've gone um, through the holidays, through the beginning of the year of 2020. And New Year's resolutions are kind of, you know, a thing that people don't usually stick to. But certainly having goals for 2020, helping you look and feel your best are a big part of, I know what you're great at. So that's why I wanted to have you back on the podcast. <laughs> you know, it's the funny thing is I've been doing this for so long and you're right. It's, we're shifting out of this idea of New Year's resolutions because it used to be that there was this big time. January, January you would start, maybe bikini season you would start, but now the, the whole flow is people are into more fitness throughout the year. But actually they jump in and then they fall off and then they maybe are doing the same thing and they get into plateaus or ruts. And so my thing is at the beginning of the year and it, it, it's worked, uh, it works for me through the years. It works for people that, you know, that I'm coaching, that I talk to. And that, that's the idea of how do you reframe goals and how do you set yourself up for success every single day. So if you have a big goal, like I want to lose 10 pounds, I want to lose 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds, that right in the beginning of the year can just, I mean, even hearing that can make your, you know, your whole being drop. It's sort of like, oh, I got to go into deprivation. I got to go into things I, you know, uh, I have to work out harder and longer and deprive myself of the things I want. So my thing is, um, how do you shift? How do you reframe what you're trying to achieve? And so if, if, if your idea is that you want to lose weight and you start with like a weekly goal or even a monthly goal, I'm going to eat more vegetables this month. I'm going to really focus on eating literally, you know, seven to nine vegetables every single day. And I'm going to go to the grocery store. The first thing I'm going to fill up in my cart is I'm going to fill up with groceries. And then I'm going to, I mean, with, um, with vegetables. And then I'm going to start filling in the other things. That might be something that turns you on. Or it could be something like, you know what? I'm going to just do um, 10 minutes of working out 
before I jump in the shower. So this is the big one that I really try to help people with. I like the before shower, get it done, get it, you know, done, you know, one and done type of thing, get it over with. And even though 10 minutes doesn't sound like a lot, people are not understanding that exercise is much more than just a calorie burn. It, you know, it, it improves circulation, as you know, for, for, for skin, it, it improves, um, you know, how you handle blood, sh your, your sugars throughout the day. And so it's really great to get that 10 to 15 minutes because studies are even showing that that simple little thing of moving your body for 10 to 15 minutes can help minimize your chances of having metabolic syndrome or diabetes and just processing sugars. And so it's the little little bit that really can go a long way. And when you start to have that feel good feeling early in the morning, you're more likely then to, um, you know, to do something later on or to stay on track. So it's really the little things. I'm really uh, big on your morning routine. You know, there, you know, everybody has heard this, but I love the, the saying, win the morning, win the day. And that whole idea is what are your three to five, um, rituals or, you know, patterns that you do every single morning that get you on track. So mine is I get up and I either make, uh, you know, either it's either a ginger shot or I love, I have a matcha um, oat milk with turmeric and cinnamon that I put in my Nutribullet. And that's kind of the first thing I put on my um, classical music, I do a little bit of a meditation and I do a, I, I write a couple things in my gratitude journal. Now, all of that can take me like 10 minutes, but it really sets the tone for the day. And, um, so I encourage people, you know, whatever your pattern is, make yourself feel yummy and, um, just loved and cared for. Cause that's part of this whole thing that the field you're in, the field I am in, it's not about feeling, um, minimizing or, uh, you, you know, yourself or feeling bad about yourself. It's about self-empowerment. Just what are you going to do to make yourself feel good today? And I think that's the thing when you build on that. And I'll just finish off by saying one thing, even though I said, win the morning, win the day, um, you win the morning. Most people don't get, you win the morning by starting the night before. So what happens the night before sets you up your next day up. So think about that and think about, you know, when is your last meal? And for me, I mean, I'm always trying to, cause I like to snack and whatever, but I, when I pull back to like stop and my last meal's over at seven or seven thirty, and then I'm not, you know, I shut down the kitchen at that point, but then eventually if I want to be in bed by like 10 o'clock, you start the process of when are you going to start turning off all these gadgets that we have? When are you going to start to, what is your ritual at night? Is it, you know, is it the hot bath? Is it with your, 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 your creams and everything? Do you have a little ritual that, you know, sometimes putting the creams on and doing 10 minutes of yoga before you go to bed, but whatever it is, setting yourself up for that good night's sleep, which sets you up for the morning before. And even though we're not talking about the exercise part of it, everything that I just suggested if you start doing those things, you're more likely to do the other things we're going to talk about uh, because you're in a good space. Yeah, absolutely. Those are, those are fantastic. And they're so true. I mean, you get a good night's sleep, you get a good start to the day. And I know I've been at conferences with you and everybody's going to get their coffee and you're like running to go do your workout. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I don't drink coffee. I got to work out. <laughs> Yeah. That is, <clears throat> I am a creature of habit. And, uh, <clears throat> and you know what? Part of it is, I know how good it makes me feel. It gets back to, I know how, and it, because we always think body um, uh, when we think about working out, or most of us do. But honestly, I mean, you know my story. We talked about it last time I was on the show. But, uh, you know, this idea of if you're suffering from anxiety or depression or, any kind of issues that we all have. I mean, when you say if you're suffering, everybody's got issues in their life. And it can be stress-related type of things. Just It could be work, relationships, whatever, kids, uh, a, a, you know, aging parents, whatever it is. But the thing that is that puts me in that centered place where I can handle it all and I can handle everything coming at me is getting that 10 minutes. I mean, it can just be 10 minutes. I mean, if it's 30 minutes, great. If it's an hour, that's fun. If I'm up on the mountain, but it doesn't have to be a lot. 
but just moving your body. And I don't know if we talked about this last time, but I'm really into this concept of nutritious movement. And it's, it's really gaining more and more popularity. And the idea is um, you can get the workout in the morning, but then if you're sitting all day long, then it almost negates that workout. And it's really fascinating that our bodies are not meant to be sitting like we are for hours and hours and hours and hours at a time. So literally I have people, when I give my talks, I say, you know, once every hour, if you're at a computer, stand up, you know, and just, just because they're seeing that just changing the level in your body, your body are thinking, I'm not asleep. Cause when it's, when we sit here for a while, your body actually is going, well, you know, we're not doing much. I can really slow down. So just standing up then once every two hours doing something that is a little bit more vigorous. And I was just doing a, I just did a conference with uh, Zach Bush, who, you know, is the great gut doctor. And he has a big thing where he's got a four minute routine and I have these myself, but it's interesting. It's, it's funny seeing Zach, who's a triple board MD, whatever. And he's, um, you know, he's got his, you know, his flapping wings that you do and then in here and then you do, and it's very fast and you do your, you know, your squats and then uh, and he's got the whole room doing it and then there's four moves you repeat it uh, four times and that's your four minutes now I have and anybody's interested and I know you'll give it to him at the end but on my website I have all kinds of these like little four minute things that you can do just twice a day that really um, not only pick up metabolism but it's also how you're processing, you know, what happens, what's happening on the cellular level. So my big thing is, do, you know, just don't become, uh, uh, we don't, not even couch potato, because that sounds like you're watching TV, but it's, it's more of the computer potato or whatever, where we're just sitting so much throughout the day. Yeah. Okay. So I know we've talked about, you and I have talked about facial extra exercises. So let's, let's talk about that first, and then we'll talk about the rest of the body. But, you know, there are a lot of people that, that watch the spot, listen to the spot actor because of skin. So let's talk about, we're, and we're talking about um, toning and keeping a youthful look and appearance on that. So what, do you, what are your feelings about facial exercises? Well, you know, when I first got, to, I always thought they were a little gimmicky, but, but when you, um, and I think it depends what you think they're going to help you achieve. I have been um, gotten more into it through the years, and it, it is it's it it makes such sense because our bodies are muscle, and you know one of the one, one of my books, Feed Muscle, Shrink Fat, uh, I talk about you know muscle is youth. As we age, we lose muscle, and as we lose muscle, we think about it in our bodies. What happens? You know your you know bicep gets a little flabby, your tricep, you know you start to uh, lose that tone. And, and I see it with women with their uh, core and their abdominals. And as they lose that tone, they start to slouch more and they get poochier. You know better than anybody that your face is made up of all these muscles. I mean, it's, it's amazing if you take off the skin and you take off the fat, right? And you know, you have this whole network of muscles there. And just like anything else, those muscles, as they start to atrophy and get a little smaller and get a little limper and looser, you know, things start to sag a little bit. So in the, in the videos and, you know, we can give them to whoever wants them. I've, I made videos about this. Uh, and there's one for the you know eyes, there's one for the neck, there's one for the cheekbones. But this is the one that I do. Oh my God, everything's going wrong here. I didn't turn off my phone. <laughs> Sorry. Ah. Okay, everything's off now. Sorry about that. Uh, so if you think about, uh, your fingers are your dumbbells. So these are your dumbbells. And so even like doing little things where you're putting your dumbbells on your cheeks. Now, with all of this, you always start with clean hands, clean face. Uh, you're not putting a lot of pressure. This is not something you're like digging into, but you're just thinking about, you know, okay, these are your dumbbells here. And now, and you do like 10 repetitions. I actually like this one because I, and then, you know, you have fingers back here. And again, I'm going through, I, I, I love the eyelid ones because this one really wakes me up in the morning. Again, think about these being your dumbbells and think about it, I'll do it on one eye. And it's just like, it, and you do a very light touch. So you're not stretching the skin or anything, but you, you drop down and then you like lift your finger up. 
lift your finger. And I just noticed that, you know, it's just, it's waking up the muscles and it's, it's, it's not anything that's going to be super dramatic, but I've seen it work. I mean, I've seen the subtle little changes and I really, I'll notice two sides of my face because all our faces are different on both sides. And this side tends to, especially when I'm tired and everything, tends to start to droop a little, a droop. I don't know if droop's the right word, but starts to start, doesn't have the, the plumpness in the, of this side. And through these little things, I can increase circulation. I increase, and I, I kind, of, kind of just wake up that muscle group. So there's one, and I, and I, and I, there's one for the lips that, you know, you're doing for the lips. Um, so anyway, I, I went to, cause when I, th this is something I don't, I'm way off topic now, but I went to a girlfriend with a girlfriend for, uh, she was going to plastic surgeon and I went with her and, um, he was talking to her about some things, uh, but he, you know, he was saying that for women, your age shows because the distance between your nose to here starts to lengthen as you get older and part of it is once again because of the muscles dropping and the lips thinning and stuff so there's just one of these things that you know that just it's 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 like how to keep those muscles you know alive but in addition to that total body exercise i mean especially with the neck reason here i mean one thing is you know when you're doing biceps you're doing all the stuff for skiing and you're using your neck muscles once again this keeps this this length here and this distance and a little bit of the of the um um you know, just the tone in that area in, you know, in the back all the way around. So it is total exercise, but I'm really, I actually, I actually have gotten into these facial exercises and I shot some videos so that if anybody's interested, they, would, they, 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 can, have, they yeah. can have them for free. Yeah, so that would be fantastic. I'm sure my eyes would be. Yeah, you know, they are a kick. You will get a kick. I, I can't, I, I, can, I want you to try them because you'll get a kick out of it. And again, the thing with facial exercises, I think, I like them. I think that a lot of times when they came out before, they're promising the world. Right. You know. Yeah. Well, yeah. so here's my question is Botox basically freezes the muscles. So my concern is what is this doing to people's muscles over time if you're paralyzing them? You know what I mean? It, like, no, I, it's I, so I, true. I that's that's that. what yeah, that's what they're finding, especially when the women that were doing excessive amounts in this area here. Uh, I think between the forehead is, you know, uh, I, I haven't heard as much about that because, um, you know, just because it, it, it's the contraction this way. But, uh, and through the years, I, you know, have used Botox between here at times, not much, but I find with all my athletics and everything, uh, Actually, I did it when I was a little, you know, younger and everything. But if you, if you can train yourself not to scrunch that down every time you're going down the ski slope and whatever, that can help. I mean, and so there's almost a training that happens. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, you can also train. I used to be on a television show called Alive and Well, and there's another person, and it was a daily TV show it was on USA Network, and. Um, I would notice that some of the women would come in and they would they would put tape across here and stuff as kind of a training thing to not always fur your brow. But the ones where you see that there's an issue if you you know do too much around the eyes and you want to get rid of crow's feet and you do all of that, then eventually those you're yeah, right these muscles start to atrophy and they, and they and you can start to see women that have had a little too much of it done through the years and decades I should say and all of a sudden this stuff is starting to really lean out and also drop. Yeah, it particularly concerns me with with the you know the women that are like in their twenties and early thirties that are starting it to to prevent wrinkles. Um, that's yeah, I'm not sure if it's actually going to do what what they're saying. But okay, so let's move on to the rest of the body. Um, so th there are certainly things that we want to do, especially as we age. And I I know that we usually, we oftentimes, we stick with one thing, right? We're like, we get into yoga. Pilates or yoga. Or <laughs> over and over again. And I know, I know your thoughts about this, but I want you to share them with everybody. <laughs> well, you know, I think I was uh, lucky. And I was talking to a friend the other day. I said, you know, we were really lucky because when we came up through the fitness movement, there weren't the specialists there are now. I mean, you would go to 
a, a strength class, an aerobics class, a yoga class, a Pilates class. I mean, you would do a little, you would do different things. And now I notice that you're absolutely right. Somebody is just into bar method or they're just into Pilates and um, they can be the best classes and great classes. But I will tell you that um, if there's anything I can suggest, and even, you know, no, no, even if you're in your twenties and thirties or, you know, that age group, the more that you can cross train with different disciplines, the more you're going to, uh, the, the easier time you're going to have maintaining your weight, having the body type, body type that you want, preventing injury, which is, you know, what I notice is that there's a lot of overuse injuries, even with yoga, something that seems like, oh, how can you get hurt in yoga? And yoga, there's so many injuries. And that's because, you know, you're constantly going through upward dog, head back, you know, eventually it's like the anterior deltoid, the back of the neck, your erector muscles. And, and you're, so you're working one part of the body, but you're not really working the buys and the lats and, and some of the other parts quite the same way. You're working the quads a lot, but you're not working the hamstrings a lot. So the way that you keep that balance is through cross training. And um, I would just recommend whatever your love is. I mean, stick with your love. If it's spinning, that's great. Uh, if it's, you know, um, I mean, I, I, we're fortunate up here in ski country and in Park City that we're we're naturally um, going to go to different sports because we have to. You can't bike in the summer. It's hard. I mean, in the winter, it's hard to run in the winter. It's hard to hike. And so you're going to go into more of these cross country, downhill, you know, snowshoeing type things. But what not only are you training your body <clears throat> in different modalities, you're also giving your body a rest. And I think one of the reasons why at my age, and I see other people that, um, um, that, you know, when at my age, why everything's still put together. There's no, I have no issues and knock on wood. I mean, no shoulder, no hips, no knees, but because of that, because of this idea that your body needs to recover, we always think about the workout being the important part. Um, the important part is what happens after the workout and what you feed it, what you feed your body, how you treat your body so that it can repair itself so that it can get stronger and you can be a better athlete. Um, I know you know this, Trevor, but for the audience, I have a daughter who is an Olympic athlete and this is one, and she went to Rio. She's an 800 meter track athlete. She might be in Tokyo this year. So I'm very excited about that, but she'll definitely be at the national championships in June. And, um, one of the things we talk about all the time and the biggest thing, and she, there's 10 Olympians on her team, but how do you recover? How do you make sure your feet, your legs, your body, your adrenals, your thyroid, I mean, everything that is tied into staying healthy uh, recovers. And that part of that is through um, good nutrition right after you work out. But this idea that they always cross, they always cross train. I mean, even the runners, they're they're not doing the same workout. Come at the end of their season, they're required, and I'm saying required to take a month off. You have to take a month off and do nothing. You're not allowed to work out for, and maybe it's like three weeks. But that whole idea is like why? Because every single tendon and ligament and everything in your body gets to recover, and so. Um, I, so that, that, I think I went down another path, uh, one path there. The, the, the other reason for cross training is because um, we have different muscle fibers. You know, you have slow, tw uh, fast twitch, slow twitch, and, you know, super fast twitch. But part of the idea is that in some of these, you, you know, in yoga and Pilates and these great disciplines, I love them, but you're really not working your heart. You're not really working your uh, propulsion. You're not really working explosive movements many times. And what happens though, as you age, those are the first things that uh, people start to notice. I mean, when people, when they really see the aging process, like, oh, I can't walk as fast. I can't run as fast. I can't do these things. So it's the heart. And, and by the way, there's a window. I was just, uh, you know, there's a study out and I love the study. In your the time to develop this heart aerobic capacity is your, in your 30s and your 40s and in your 50s, because you can maintain it and you can and honestly there are 70 year olds who started when they were in their 40s and 50s that can maintain your aerobic capacity and you don't have to lose a whole lot. But here's the the caveat there: if you don't start, 
there's a point where there you can't catch up and so sort of like if you don't if you wait till mid 60s and things to start with some of this aerobic stuff then it's then you're going to lose a lot of that aerobic capacity and people don't realize it um and again you're still and i know a lot of the audience is is young and young being you know 40 ish but 30s and 40s but i have friends that have turned like late 40s and all of a sudden they'll call me and they'll say oh my god I can't believe it happened. What you said was going to happen, which like all of a sudden their strength isn't there. They're going to pick up a suitcase. They're going to move something and they just realize, or they go they're going out to play, you know, a sport that they used to play uh, so easily and they're winded. So it does happen to all of us. And the trick is you don't have to do a lot. You just have to be consistent. And uh, I do mention this, um, over and over again consistency is the key and that's why to your point i travel a lot so i can't say we have a good friend he, we won't mention his name but uh but i'm having dinner with him tomorrow night but uh but the point the, about what i was thinking about is that whenever he always goes oh i don't work out when i'm on the road but he's on the road like you know 200 days a year <laughs> And he works out in tennis. So I just make sure that's an easy excuse for all of us. Like we're on vacation, <clears throat> we're on the road, we can't. And I just realized that um, it's so easy to, to um, you know, stay moving wherever you are. Yeah, absolutely. So there's some other things that, it, it, you know, I, I think, you know, certainly with cross training, it's that it, it also helps with flexibility and being able to rebound and age gracefully and, and being able to prevent injury, certainly slips and falls and all of that as we get older, we're more prone to that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so some of the other things that people are concerned about, one thing that happens as we get older is a lot of people complain about belly fat. Uh, I didn't have this when I was younger. Why am I getting this, this belly fat? How do I get rid of it? So what are your, what are your tips on that? Well, again, <clears throat> I don't want to be redundant because we talked about this on the other show, but I do think it's important because everybody, uh, it's the number one question I get, and that is um, belly fat. So again, we talked about it before. As a reminder, you have muscle groups and your core. And think about your core is not only the front, but the back, and you have your rectus abdominis which goes from your rib cage to your pelvis and those are your crunching muscles and that's your six-pack muscle uh and uh you have your twisting and those are your external and internal obliques and those are for all your bicycles and that kind of creates the the waistline here and um then you have what we call the transverse abdominis and those go across your belly and those are the ones that as we're sitting here, we can be working. And, I, and I'm, I'm big on uh, telling people this because this is the one that really helps your posture and in helping your posture will help that perception of belly fat. So the difference between me being up here uh, in, in you know, the camera or whatever right now and not using my transfers and being down here means what's crunching to get me down here is my midsection is now compressing pooching a bit and at the same time putting all this pressure on the internal organs so in um the way that you think about the transverse abdominis is you think about again putting on your tightest pair of pants and and you have to like oh suck it in and um so that's important but i want to get into we didn't talk about this in the last show i want to get into another aspect of that which is the pelvic floor but before i do Think about putting tightest, tightest pair of pants and that keeps you upright, not with your shoulders. Shoulders are still relaxed, but that transverse is engaged. And then the final topping on the cake or whatever is the pelvic floor. So in my family, because of Kate, my Olympian, we talk a lot about the pelvic floor because believe it or not, as an athlete, your pelvic floor is extremely important for performance and for your core. And it's not something we talk about, but think about your pelvic floor as being that sling at the bottom of your body. So if you think about, you know, from your pubic bone up until your, um, 
well, what is that bone, you know, by your anus there, or that you're going, you're going to, that you have that sling there. And that sling, especially as we, after we have children, you know, gets a little slingier. And what happens is that that, that area down there is an area that if you start to learn how to turn that on, you start to turn on the internal muscles of your core. And the way that we do that, there's like kegels, but there's, you know, a lot of people do kegels, not quite the right way. Uh, the way that uh, we're teaching now is to lie on your back and to, uh, to go into a neutral position so you don't have anything uh, working against that, that hammock we're talking about. And then you think about taking a marble and you think about inserting in your vagina and you start taking that marble and you start thinking about working that marble up and up and up and that contraction that would happen of like taking it you might even think about like an elevator and you're putting it in on the basement and you're going to take it up to the first floor the second floor the third and hold it at the top at the top you're going to flutter a little bit and it's like flutter 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 like quick 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 tension release tension release and then you relax it down so things like that uh, are things that you can do throughout the day so what's fun about something like that including the transverse abdominals you're sitting in the car you can you give yourself a laugh by being in line at you know whole foods and um you know be doing your flutter kicks inside your body and um those little things though they're also just for me they're sort of pavlovian they're sort of a thing that just tells me engage, you know, pull up, engage throughout the day. Cause we all do. We don't, if you're not <clears throat> training that area, you go into the slouch mode. And when I show people on stage, what it looks like, it's pretty dramatic and you can, okay. So I kind of went too long with that. Let me get off into next. Um, we went through the muscles on top of the muscle fat, which is your subcutaneous fat marbled through the muscle and the organs is your visceral fat, which is a little more dangerous both respond the best to um, something called HIT training, high intensity interval training. And, it's, uh, and HIT training is where there's variations on this, but I would just recommend you pick something on your block there, you know, uh, mark off a, a certain area. And for 60 seconds, you know, I pick up the speed so that depending if you're a walker, you pick up fast walking. If you're a jogger, you pick it up to a fast jog or a sprint. And then you recover for 30 seconds. And then you repeat that pattern and you just do, you do, you know, and you build up. Eventually you do six to eight of those. And, and, and it's a 10 to 15 minute little workout that's literally pushing yourself. And what people, I think we a lot of people get in their comfort zone. They like their comfort zone. They like walking their dogs. Not, that's great. Walking dog is great. Being on the treadmill, talking to your friend, going for what all of that is like, do not avoid that. That's all social and wonderful. But this idea of pushing yourself, uh, you will notice if you want to make the biggest difference in, in your body and in your well being and in your mental well being, just add some hip training. And that's where you really tackle this belly fat. Right. Absolutely. Um, and, and I know that you're doing, there's some kind of newer stuff too. There's the, uh, the blood flow restriction program too, that you, you're, you're, you've been looking into. So what do you, how do you feel about that? Yeah, no, it's the most exciting thing. And I, you know, I, I want to say that it, it will be, it's the talk, it's the buzz is going around now with kind of the early adapters and, um, Lots of companies are jumping on. Lots of people are wanting to know about it. So let me explain what it is. It's called blood flow restriction training. Uh, the acronym is BFR. And it comes out of Japan, called Katsu Training in Japan. Bodybuilders have been using it here in the United States forever, but not necessarily in a safe way. Um, but basically, you get it's a band that you uh, like a cuff, a blood pressure cuff in a sense that you put at the top of your limbs, your arms, and your legs, right by your groin there. And there's a little pump, and you pump it up, and that pump uh, then creates puts a little air in, in, into the into the uh, chamber, into the chambers, I should say, and then it what happens is that arterial blood flow. So again little anatomy here, you have 
are arteries going into your limbs and your vein and they're going away from your heart and then your veins are coming back you know out of your limbs so it doesn't restrict arterial blood flow but it restricts um uh, venous blood flow now the the key here is it restricts it doesn't occlude so it doesn't cut it off or anything it just makes it a little harder and the way we call this your muscle pump and so what happens is you do your bicep curl you're helping that blood flow get back to your but into back to you know your heart and the circulation and everything and um but here's the key it tricks your body into thinking you're working out harder than you are so you can lift lighter weights, less damage to the joints, le less recovery time, and um, it, in, it starts to incorporate more muscle fibers faster. And then the biggest thing, which I've noticed, which I'm just like dying about, there's a systemic response in your body. And the systemic response is this cascade of hormones that's released. And so you're going to love this, Trevor, even for, you know, like for, and I'll, I'll get together and work out with you with this, but Human growth hormone, HGH, which, you know, everybody knows is a, a bit of a fountain of youth, uh, but, you know, how do you get it naturally? And naturally you get HGH is released when you do really high intensity uh, working out, but most people don't work out to that level or whatever. So this takes you to the place where your body is tricked into thinking it's working out at that level, releasing this cascade of hormones, which just, just helps vitality, brain function. Um, I'm just feeling, you know, you'll see that, you know, the, uh, so I'm, I'm super excited about it. It is one of those things that there's a learning curve and I'm, I'm involved now in helping to, um, simplify the program that I'm working with, which is called be strong. So be strong is, you know, is the safest one of these on the market. And as you're looking around, you start to look around, please definitely check out be strong and go to my website. And I have actually a podcast with the inventor of be strong, but cause there's ways it is now gaining a lot of popularity. A couple companies are now few companies are now uh, popping up on the scene and you're going to see more and more of this, but um, it's, it's, you know, to do it the safe way, it's unbelievable. And just like everything else, even with skincare, you know, there's safe ways to do things and then you know you can get into something and if you're not going to the right people or whatever you can you can actually damage the skin so kind of that same approach just do do your homework and fortunately i've spent the last year and a half doing mine so it's pretty exciting though i'm really excited about that thank you for asking yeah that's really great and i know i know some of our friends have been doing this and i i haven't actually tried it yet i know i've seen it i've I've heard about it, but I'm excited to get together with you and try it out. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, and yeah, like you said, you know, anything, it just, you have to be careful and pay attention to your body and, and be, be smart. Right. Of course. Right. And if you have health issues, you know, you, you know, want to make sure you're addressing those and not jump into something that could be dangerous. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. So Kathy, I know that you have this free, you have a free fit over 40 program that you're, that you're promoting right now. So, I mean, this, I love this idea because we all need ideas for exercise. we just talked about the fact like, don't do the, don't just keep doing the same thing, mix it up a little bit. So I love that you have this program and it's, what is it? 14 days? Is that what it is? Yeah. So it's free. And I love that you're bringing it up. And exactly. It ties into what we're talking about. It's, you get a new workout every day and uh that will be delivered either there's a couple ways we deliver it but however you want we can do it in an email or um there you can download them but basically the idea is mixing it up you might have a, a core pilates day you might have a you know hit training day uh, a yoga day and every single day you get a workout and it's it's pretty quick there they're, they're 10 minute workouts 15 minute workouts and 20 minute workouts and i think once in there there's an hour long uh walk option that we give you and uh, with hit training so uh, the idea that you have this it's 14 days there's a group that i've created that we can support your efforts i can answer any of your questions so uh yeah if you're looking for that it's just um Oh, I, th I was going to remember this, but I don't kind of remember it. It's, 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 uh, it's kathyscott.com ca slash fit over 40. You got it. <laughs> I'm here for you, Kathy. <laughs> we'll also have the link up below your interview on okay. the website. So yeah, huh. so we'll have that link up so that um, you guys can go check it out. And I mean, I mean, I definitely, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna do it. I need some ideas to mix it up. Um, so yeah, thank you for doing that. And 
tell everybody um, any other way that people can connect with you or, you know, you're on social media, your website, all of that. Yeah. Website is just kathysmith.com, uh, Kathy with a K and everything is there. And I, you know, I give lots of information, lots of videos, lots of free giveaways. Uh, Instagram is Kathy Smith fitness, Kathy with a K again, but all that stuff, I think the easiest way, you know, my, my podcast also is, um, the art of living Kathy Smith. But, uh, if you put in K T H Y Smith, uh, and get to my website, everything we're talking about will be on that homepage. So I can direct you, uh, any questions that they have, they can come through me, they can, you know, send them to you and you can forward them. So I'm, I'm really eager to answer questions. And I also want to say before we, uh, hang up or I leave you, I have to tell you, your book really was helpful. And, uh, you know, I got back, um, I did this big adventure this summer, the Camino of Santiago, which I walked across Spain. And um, it's a 500 mile walk. It's 20 miles a day. It took me 30 days. It was life changing. Uh, well, you know, wouldn't have traded it for the world. Although I will say, one of the things when you're walking across Spain and you're, you know, you're carrying your stuff, you're carrying your backpack, you have your two pairs of pants, your two tops, one, you know, uh, your sunblock or whatever. Um, by the way, <clears throat> my daughter was helping me pack. She goes, you either get to take a lip gloss or an eye, eye pencil. <laughs> you only get one piece of makeup, one, one, one skincare product. But anyway, got back the point that I'm trying to get to got back. And my, I've never had this. My skin was a wreck for, I mean, and I think it was because I'm not even sure, I mean, exactly why, but I, I was two months in, in Europe with different things. And um, I really, it was the first time in my entire life, I had to go back to basics of just, how do you clean up your act? And I think part, part of it was probably the sugar because when you're walking that much and when you're in Spain and every morning there's a croissant and there's jams and there's homemade this and there's that and that, and you're expending a lot of calories and you're, you don't really have, you know, a big soup food supply around. So you kind of eat what's there, which was fine. And again, no regrets with all of it, but I did get the, I did eventually get the sugar Jones. I mean, I was so like, I was half a chocolate bar a day. It's not, it's not the one little dark piece that we talk about, you know, dark chocolate. It was like, <laughs> and I think it was, I don't know if just calories, but I got back and it, you know, getting back to the basics of cleaning out and just cleaning out, um, you know, what goes in your body and what goes on your, on your, on your body and your skin and it world of difference. So completely turned, you know, turn, so it, you know, I'm living proof, you know, once again, and kind of like with exercise, I mean, you go through these stages in life and you think you got it all put together and you, you know, I haven't had, I hadn't had that issue in, I don't know how many years, but it was one of those things where nothing was, uh, no, nothing was working on my skin. And I, you know, I, I pulled out your book, started thumbing through, started doing things and good now. So thank you. There, there you go. It actually works. There you go. <laughs> Dated by Kathy Smith. All right. Well, Kathy, thank you. And thanks again for coming on today. It's always so fun to interview you and learn from you. You're just, you've been doing this, you know, you're a fitness titan. You've been doing this a long mm -hmm. time and you're just, you're my go-to for, for fitness, any questions related to that. So Thank you for, for covering like a recap on some things and, and teaching us some new things. And um, I'll have to have you back on sometime and we'll have to get the slope soon. Okay. I'm up for it. <laughs> it's always great. <laughs> See you soon. I hope you enjoyed this interview today with Kathy Smith. I certainly did. And to learn more about her and get the links that she talked about in the interview, you can go to thespotdoctor.com, go to the podcast page with her interview, and you'll find all the information and links there. And while you're there, I invite you to join the Spot Doctor community so you don't miss our upcoming shows. And we always love to hear your reviews. So hop over to iTunes. That's the best place to leave a review. So we'll, we'll get to see those reviews and we sometimes share those on the spot actor podcast always love to see those and if you haven't already taken the skin quiz you can go to theskinquiz.com find out 
what messages your skin is trying to tell you about your health and what you could do about it. Just go to theskinquiz.com. Find out if you're an Amber, Olivia, Sage, Emmett, or Heath skin type. It's a skin quiz I put together to help people get real solutions to their skin and overall health. And you could join us on social media. The Spot Doctor is on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Pinterest. You can join the conversation there. And I'll see you next time on the Spot Doctor podcast.